Good day everyone and once again we're back together still looking at that organic chemistry. So if you haven't subscribed please just make sure you're part of the family and of course you can become a member on this channel uh, so that you can benefit from those valuable perks. So go on to memberships to go and benefit from that and see what we have in store for you. All right so uh, we're looking at um, uh, organic chemistry. Right, question three from the November 2022 exam, right, in preparation for those of you that will be writing, of course, um, you know, it's always important for you to prepare, right? Okay, so they say the melting points of some of the organic compounds are given in the table below. All right, so uh, what I just want us to do is just quickly to analyze that. So if you look at, uh, let's say, uh, propanone and butanone, right? So if I were to compare those two, remember, propanone has got three carbons, whereas butanone has got four. And look at what happens, right? The melting point actually increases, right? Um, obviously, that means the more the number of carbons, the greater that melting point becomes, right? Um and of course, uh, with the pen, uh, pentan 2 own uh, there. Right, and then uh, we now have, um, you know, uh, 3-methyl-butanone, uh, right? Uh, if you look at that there, uh, it would be the same number of carbons with pentanone. But of course, because this guy here... Uh, is more spherical. I mean, it's got a side chain is in it, or uh, it you know it's got a branch in it. So what happens is that look at that difference in the melting point. Uh, this one has got a lesser melting point uh, than uh, this guy, of course, because of the surface area, right? And of course, if you don't understand all of what I'm saying, uh, perhaps it's about time you visit our lessons. Uh, on organic chemistry, right? Look at that playlist there, right? Now let's answer the questions. They say, to which homologa series do the above compounds belong, right? So remember, our suffix is own there. So definitely those would be ketones. So for 3.1.1, okay, uh, that is uh, ketones there. That's the homologa series. Right, and 3.1.2, they say the melting point of compound A, B, and C are compared. Write down the controlled variable uh, for this comparison, right? Now, um, in this case, remember, what is a controlled variable? In this case, it, it it's something that we keep the same, isn't it, right? So if you notice there, what is it that we kept the same, right? It's the functional group right? Uh, we've changed the number of carbons, right? But in this case, the functional group stays the same. Or uh, if you want to, you can say the homologa series. Um, yeah, but uh, in this case, uh, that all uh, means the same thing, right? So we can say there, the functional group stays the same, okay? A functional group, okay? Or as I said, you can definitely say it's the homologous series. They all come from the same homologous series, right? And in this case, we're looking at 3.1.3. .3. They say the melting points of compounds C and D are compared, right? Fully explain the difference in the melting points of these two compounds. Please note these are, uh, you know, this is out of four marks, right? Now, what did we say the difference is? This one has got a straight chain, right? So it's made out of a, a compound C, rather, uh, is made out of straight chains. Uh, in this case, compound D, on the other hand, is made out of, uh, you know, so this one would have uh, straight chains, whereas this guy would have a side chain or a branch, you could call it that. But we know that, uh, uh, you know, the functional groups are the same, right? So in this case, what are we going to do? We know this one is more spherical in shape. 
uh, this one is more linear the surface area is much greater right um, so more energy is required in this case uh, you know to um, uh, to break in this case the uh, you know those molecules right or rather to separate the molecules so I would say um, uh, so we'd say pentan 2 own okay pentan uh, 2 own right has got a um a, a, a longer chain length and uh, has got a longer uh, chain length okay so that's the first thing that we observe right or in this case you can say that uh, um the other one three methyl butane has got a shorter chain length okay or you can say is uh, more branched okay or you can say this one is uh, uh, less branched okay right so that's the first thing which means that it has a greater surface area okay with a greater surface area okay greater surface area if you don't mind i'm just going to write as a there right and we know that intermolecular forces okay increase with an increase in surface area with an increase in surface area okay uh, and by the way uh, we can actually just specify which intermolecular force there uh, we know uh, uh, in this particular case uh, that you know, uh, it, it obviously they are, there's a combination of London forces and dipole-dipole forces there uh, between uh, 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 ketones, right? Um, so I'm just going to say intermolecular forces in this case increase with an increase uh, in surface area. So in this case, more energy is required. More energy is required. Is required to separate the molecules of compound, uh, we said it's compound uh, C, than D. And so that is why it will have, therefore, uh, C has a greater melting point okay right so in this case please remember we always need to compare what is the difference between the two we know that the difference there uh, was um, in this case the chain length right so the one with the greater chain length in this case has a greater surface area uh, and we know that intermolecular forces increase with an increase in surface area so more energy was required for that there. Right, so let's go on to the next one. Right, so they give us another table. They say the table below shows the results uh, obtained in an experiment to determine the vapor pressure uh, of, uh, straight of different chain, uh, straight chain primary alcohols. Né? Right, now I want you to note there we are again increasing the chain length as we go. What happens to the vapor pressure, right? So the vapor pressure keeps decreasing, okay? That's very important uh, to note there, right? So the vapor pressure does keep decreasing. Now, the first question that we are given there, they say to us, um, so uh, we need to define the term uh, vapor pressure. Uh, please remember that vapor pressure by definition, we say that this is the pressure, okay, uh, of a compound uh, with, with its liquid at equilibrium, okay? So we say that this is the pressure of a compound at equilibrium uh, with its liquid in a closed system, right? All right, we have to mention the fact that uh, it is in a closed system. Right, so the next one, they say write down a suitable conclusion 
uh, for this uh, investigation. Please, I won't write uh, 3.2.1. Um, right, you can write that down for yourself. Okay, so uh, they want us to find uh, the conclusion. Of course, in this case, we notice that uh, vapor pressure decreases, right, with an increase in the number of, uh, uh, or in, with an increase in chain length. So we can say vapor pressure, okay, increases, or rather uh, decreases, sorry about that, uh, decreases with an increase in chain length. Okay, right. Um, you can actually phrase this in any way that uh, you want. Okay, right. And the next one. Okay, so uh, in this case, we are simply looking at the next question. They say write down a suitable conclusion uh, for this. Uh, no, no, no. Actually, we've just uh, answered that. They say write down the IUPAC name of the alcohol with the highest boiling point. Now, please, I want you to note, ladies and gents, all right? Um, in this case, boiling point and vapor pressure, right, um, are actually, you know, inverses of each other. What I mean by that is that an increase in boiling point means a decrease in, in vapor pressure. Right. So if I'm looking for the highest boiling point, therefore, I'm looking for the lowest vapor pressure. Right. So which one has got the lowest vapor pressure? It's going to be this guy here. And because they said the IUPAC name, what would be the alcohol that has got six carbons? Right. And in this case, we know that there are primary alcohols as well. Right. So that is going to be. Uh, please remember to uh, give the position of, uh, uh, you know, uh, 2.3, uh, right? Uh, so that would be uh, 6. So that's going to be uh, hex, hexen 1, all. Okay, or you can say this is 1 hexanol. All right, please remember that. That's got, that's the one with the, um, highest boiling point. Okay, right. And they say the experiment is now repeated at 320 Kelvin. Okay. And uh, remember, um, and they're asking us, will the vapor pressure of each compound increase, decrease, or remain the same? Right. So, notice in this case, uh, initially, the vapor pressure um, uh, was, I mean, they measured the vapor pressure at 300 Kelvin. What happens when I increase the temperature, right? So obviously it tends to make more vapor, isn't it? So as a result, we know definitely that our vapor pressure should actually increase. So the answer to that uh, will be uh, it increases, okay? Right, or we can write that as capital letters or, you know, uh, caps. Right, so in this case, um, that is how the cookie crumbles. So please uh, remind yourself of, uh, of these, uh, uh, you know, definitions, right? Um, yeah, I think that is how the cookie crumbles. That's 14 marks uh, just like that, okay? Right, and I will see you again when we do the next question, which is question four. Right, uh, that will be on the next video. I'll see you guys next time. Please don't forget to subscribe and like. And of course, tell as many people that your uncle is doing the most in maths and science. From me for now, shop shop.